Welcome back to the Tidy Room Hanger. This is Mike, and today I want to talk to you about the sustainability of the Masterpiece line. We're going to talk about many of these factors that go into sustaining the Masterpiece line for the long term, such as price, such as character selection, such as collector longevity. Also talking about producer longevity. How long will these companies keep making these products and the future? Will future generations even care? We're going to talk about all of this coming up. First off, I do want to talk about price, and when you talk about price, last week, the KO video and discussing the state of KO, price came up a lot. It came up quite frequently, and so I'm going to discuss this pretty quick because I talk about it a lot, but it needs to be talked about when you look at the sustainability and longevity of the Masterpiece line. So looking at this Tesla here, this figure here, when he first came out, was around 100 bucks, the 1.0, and the 2.0 is $229. That is way over double what the original price was depending on where you bought your bugs originally the bugs were 80 then they reissued them for some places charging 200 now they're on sale so a little bit under double the price on sale so the price is going up and even on re reissue items this is kind of crazy how long can we sustain these high prices these guys are priced at 160 which it's a high price it, it almost seems like it's not that bad of a price because you see the major price tags on these other ones, but 160 is still high. These guys are priced at 189 or 190. That's a pretty high price point for those, especially when you're used to getting them from other companies for under the $100 price point. Yes, Fans Toys is the best, commands the highest price, but 190? And just the head, the Cerebros, just the head of Fort Max is going to cost 225 So what would an entire Fort Max cost? Nobody really knows. To put this into perspective, when x came out with their Apollyon, their Megatron was 150 Now they're going to give us their Galvatron at 200 And a lot of people will say you can't really compare x and Fans Toys because of the quality. And there's a few reasons there. And I've even heard that good old Keith will sell a product $3 more than it costs him to produce just to pull a profit, just to get it made, just to win the competition. So I've heard this rumor. I can't substantiate it, but how he can get these low prices right now is running razor thin margins, and I think that's what he's doing. Huh, look at me saying a $200 figure is a low price. But then this guy here is $300. Now, this is when it starts getting into more obscure, and I don't really think this one's going to see the really high production run. So that's part of it, but it's also a huge figure. It's going to be ginormous, the biggest one made ever of this character that I know of. So that factors into the price too. And of course, there's more that goes into it, but will it be good? But staying on topic with price and longevity or sustainability of the Masterpiece line. And when you say now there are places that are asking $300 for the Robot Paradise or Fansoy's version of Soundwave, and he's not selling out. He's not selling out at $300 and he will sit for $300 for a while until I guess the market catches up to that price or until it sells out. Now it seems like people are okay with spending the extra money on the secondary market more than buying it from a distributor for an inflated price. And I can understand the psychology there, meaning that there should be, well, there might be a hundred of them still, and maybe there'll be a sell down the road, but on the secondary market, it doesn't quite work like that. Still, price could really destroy the, the masterpiece market because not everybody's in for $300 on this guy. Soundwave also leads into the next topic, which would be character selection and saying that people already have a Soundwave, so why spend $300 on one that's slightly better in their eyes? Same thing with Tesla. Now, Tesla 2.0, there are multiple options out there, so why spend the 225 on this guy when you can get another one out there? Well, this one kind of swings a pendulum, pendulum, pendulum in two directions, and here's why. You can go on eBay right now, and there are at least 20 of the FT09 versions of Tesla and they're for sale for about anywhere from $100 to people are shooting for the stars with 300. About a year and a half ago these were selling for five to six hundred dollars and there was only one or two on eBay and now there's 20 on eBay and they're all fighting to sell them for a hundred and, and, and guess what they're not selling for a hundred so there's so many up for a hundred right now that you can get three or four of them for a hundred you can pick which one you like the most and they're still not selling. People are probably, probably going to have to let them go for 80 or something like that. It blows your mind when this was selling for $500. 
So are people really going to want to spend 160 to get these new car bots from Fans Toys? So character selection is a big deal because it's more of a cannibalizing thing right there. And I have to say, this does sort of play into what's going to happen with producers down the road, but Fans Toys seems to still hold a premium, still carry a premium. They don't sell out like they used to. And when when you hear people say Fans Toys sells out, pre-orders sell out, but when they come into stock and fill pre-orders, there's more available that linger for months, if not, in some cases, years. So one thing that's going to make sustainable masterpiece collections and keeping it relevant is new characters. And not everybody's in for the Omnibots, but I think that's what X-Transbots is doing and doing right. They're doing it and doing it well. Yes, everybody that wants fans toys, they want the fans toys representation of every single character. I understand that. But will fans toys ever even get around to this? Is this even on their plate? Is it what they consider to be a G1 figure from the movie, from the TV series, or will they never bother with this? And this is something you can only get through an X Transbots or an MMC or another company out there trying to take a risk. Now getting into Takara and their price and their character availability, and their character selection. And looking at this, with skids, we're getting a little bit more obscure and we're getting a good price. 90 is a good price from Takara. I think it's priced so low, there won't even be KOs of this. What Would there really be a KO coming out for 40 or 50 bucks? I don't know if the companies would even bother at this point. Then you got Seekers for around the $250 price point. And of course, the good thing about KO is that you could get a lower price on some of these higher price items, such as the Seekers. I'm going to be reviewing one of those pretty soon. But when you look at all of this and you look at the KO of this, I've said it before, Takara is most expensive and the cheapest at the exact same time. I think Fans Toys is giving a run for the money for the most expensive. And then we've got these $200 train bots that we are all starting to think are chug scale, not even masterpiece scale. For $200 and then you need six of them so over 1200 bucks to build Raiden 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 so with that Takara is sort of all over the place but for a lot of different reasons so there's a lot of reasons out there that collectors could lose interest they could retire or they could pass away which is something that is hitting us close to home left and right and it's just really hard to think about losing people in our community that are around our age it's shocking it's surprising, it's sad, but it does happen, and it happens more frequently than I would like to admit. I've heard a lot of people say, are you going to collect into your 70s? What are you going to do in your 70s with all the stuff that you collect? Well, what are you going to do in your 70s other than collect? I mean, usually when people retire, they spend more time with their hobbies. I tell you, when I truly 100% retire, I'm going to love my hobby even more because I, I just don't want to be bored. I mean, what, what else do people do? What are people going home to do that are going to be retired in our generation if they don't have some sort of hobby, some sort of outlet, something to enjoy in life once you've retired? But one of the things is that we want to pass this on to the next generation. For a lot of collectors, it's a family ordeal. I collect with my son. My son's out there on the hunt with me. My son stays in the know with me. And with that, I think a lot of people share the sentiment and feel the same way. But will the next generation even care. You hear all the time that kids these days are more interested in video games and less interested in collecting collectibles, actual tangible things, and I see it. Even with my youngest son who's into Roblox, if he gets a Roblox item, it comes with a download code, and if something happens and that download code doesn't work, or he loses it, or it's damaged, or something's wrong, he's really upset about it. It's like that was more important than the actual item in the box which blows my mind, but I guess I can sort of understand. But as we, the G1ers, are growing and moving on, there's going to be other people coming behind us that are into the movie Transformers, which we're starting to see that right now. And then the Beast Wars and all of that, which is getting more popular right now, and all of the 90s franchises. But Fans Toys, and for the most part, X Transbots, is really dialed into the G1ers and the G1 collecting and the G1 aesthetic and look and bots. And I've also heard that Fans Toys is going to quit the game once they've made Optimus Prime and Megatron. Now, that's a complete and total rumor. I've heard that rumor. That could have just been made up by somebody that was just sitting around thinking it up, but that's what I heard. That's still like 20 years out, but that is something that I heard. They want to make every single character that appeared in the U.S. TV show, and I haven't seen them doing anything for the Japanese TV show, but yet, again, 
this guy doesn't match the UST show. So there's a lot of holes in that theory, but will the producers keep producing once the G1ers are kind of done with collecting? I think they will. So if Keith retires one day and he stops making X Transbots or KFC items, then I think he would pass that business on to somebody else that would utilize all of the facilities and everything that he's done and everything he's built and everything he's grown to do something else similar. But same thing with Takara though, with Takara is a group of people that are there for a business to make business decisions and it's different. Takara is different than a third party. Third parties fill up people that do it for the passion. Yes, they make money, they do it for the passion. And you could see that they make the characters they wanna make, they make the figures, they make them the way they want to look, they make them represent the era that they want them to represent. They basically make what they want. When it comes to Takara, they make what they want also, but they're more driven about profit, they're more driven by sales, not the love of the franchise. So wrapping up all these concepts and putting a bow on it, price is going to affect the sustainability of Masterpiece Transformers. That's all there is to it. People cannot afford two and three hundred dollars for every figure that comes out. People are not gonna be trading up. Not every collector or not enough of them are gonna be trading up. And yes, I've said it before, but we're gonna be testing the waters with some of these new, more obscure characters that have been never been made in the Masterpiece scale before. And we're gonna see how well they sell. And I gotta tell you, everyone says they like them, everyone says they're on board, but it comes time to plop the money down, we'll see how many people really are on board. As we sadly lose collectors in the community due to unforeseen circumstances, it is sad, but it is part of life, and that part of life will change collecting going forward more and more but my opinion i think we're gonna see 20 more years of masterpiece transformers it's just as each year goes by we're gonna start seeing less and less options and we're gonna see more and more refined figures sadly i do not see prices going down so with prices getting higher and higher every year i think we're gonna see less and less collectors but let me know what you think in the comments below do you think that we're gonna see 20 more years of masterpiece transformers is price gonna do them in is the character selection gonna do them in is the lack of collectors gonna do them in let me know in the comments below like and subscribe to deer hanger out